I am of the same stuff as creation. Now, if you say yes, then something, it says something about how you, who you are, how you treat this world, how you live in this world, how you treat others in this world. Nowadays, people turn more naturally to science. It's just easier. Science, like philosophy, can only say perhaps to that question, is this my creator's world? It's a fact, that, though, that fewer and fewer atheists are being found among really serious scientists. Now, it's not to be construed that some genius has come up with an equation that says, equals God. You know, Einstein said late in his life that surely God is intelligible somehow. But what we see happening now is that science understanding its own limits It no longer subscribes to the delusion that because God can't be poured into a test tube measured by a computer or weighed somehow, that God doesn't exist. There are things beyond our control, and they're real. Now, I'm not one who would say, give up on science. I think God gave us scientific discovery. You know, there were, there were professors like Dr. Edwin Conklin, who uh, was a professor of uh, Princeton University, biology and zoology, and he's quoted as saying that the chances of life as we know it being originated by accident are about the same as an unabridged dictionary of the English language being produced by the explosion in a print shop. <laughs> Think about that. Faith of people like Conklin means that the evidence of the laboratory does not make faith in God irrational. And indeed, it may even compel a person to ask the question, is this my creator's world? It does not, however, dictate the response whether a woman or a man says yes or no to that question. It's still a choice. And it's a choice that's made by the scientist, just as every one of us have to make it. In order to be truly religious, to truly be a follower of Christ, faith cannot depend on some instrument of weighing it. To believe in God because of science is not to believe in God. In our empirical method, philosophy and science and theology, they all render a service to us, but it still presses us to make the decision on the question. It sets up a springboard, it brings us to a chasm and asks us to decide the ultimate God is God on the other side. There's no such thing as religious certainty. It requires that we have faith. The question is one God or none. And it's a different kind of question than a question on a chemistry exam. It is a question addressed not merely to our minds, but to our whole being. It's a question that cannot be answered simply by adding numbers together. It's answered only by the giving of the whole, our whole self. So many times we just walk into our lives with all kinds of answers set up for us and we take them because tradition tells us that's the way it is and we don't have to make our own decisions. We don't take any risk in making decisions about where we come from that we require any type of response. But we cannot know God, cannot know God the same way we know multiplication facts. God is not a fact. God is not something we can master by our minds. God is who masters us and masters our lives. You know God not by grasping God, but as Paul put it, being grasped by God. You can only know God by being known by God. For you see, the person who answers, is this my creator's world, by just saying, yeah, flunks the exam. 
the proper response is, yes, and that means I am God's creature, and therefore I live in accordance with God's plan for my life. I am God's creature. If we are God's creature, that means we have been made by God. And in a sense, what hell is, is living as though we are the center of the universe. Because that's an illusion. You can't live in alienation to your source. Now, do we study scripture? Do we study tradition? Do we... Do we work in the world to understand how things work? Yes. But we have to live as though the world, indeed the whole universe, is God's creation and we are a part of it. We are the stuff of the universe. And we should live in harmony with it. And that decision is not a head decision. It's a heart decision. It is a response that pure reason, reason and a cold appraisal of things can't make. It can only be made by faith. Answering the call of Christ like one who stands behind all things and calls them into humanity, that doesn't mean that faith is irrational. Faith is not believing in things you know that can't be true. A mature faith is not an affirmation of the impossible. A true faith is trust. Eric Erickson, a great psychologist, although we've got another great psychologist in the room. Eric Erickson said that the only way we get out of our infancy is to learn a basic sense of trust. And when a person has learned to trust in someone, then later, when religion calls that person to have faith, they have a, a vehicle to be able to do that. I remember when both Nick and Kristen were born, and you're holding this baby in your hands and you don't know whether to laugh or cry. They're beautiful, you're so happy that they're healthy, but oh my God, nobody else but Sherry and I are going to be their teachers of trust. And if we do it wrong, if we do it wrong, they might uh, be able to have trust later in life. We must be careful about the things we say so patly. We rattle off words so easily, and you know those ancient Jews, those prophets of old, would just laugh at us because sometimes we think that we contain God in our words. The prophets would say you never will find words ever to represent the total grand reality, the one reality that is God. So what does that demand? You have to risk your life. You have to count on. You have to trust. So somebody had better start loving people right now. Before you can ask somebody to love you back, you've got to share that love. Every week when we leave this place, I try to remind us that we are called to share God's love outside of this building. So when we say, this is my creator's world and we mean it, then there's some consequences. It is a faith that helps us leap that chasm of life that God intends for us. Faith that becomes our answer, an answer sufficient to meet the demands that we lose our life in order to save it. Only a faith from God could dare us to win by losing. You know, after Jesus died, people started talking and they said, you know, he really was what he taught. They said, you saw the best of him while he was dying because as he was dying, he says, God, forgive him. 
they don't just they just don't get it. Forget